Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at creating a player character token, assigning the token to the map, and then controlling the token's line of sight as well as the fog of war within that map. So I'm on the dashboard of Dungeon Fog. I'm going to click on the left hand menu to bring up my campaigns. Here you will see all of the campaigns that I'm currently running within Dungeon Fog. I'm going to select the Bounty Hunters campaign, open the campaign, and this will present us with the campaign manager screen. The important thing that we're going to be looking at today is the tokens. The player characters are all loading up there, and if I want to add a new player character token, all I do is select Add Token. I then select the token image. I scroll through to whether it's my uploads, my collections, or Dungeon Fog. The choice is yours. I'm going to use one from my uploads. I scroll down to the character that I want to add as a potential player token. Let's add this character here. I can change and colorize as I so choose by using the normal controllers within Dungeon Fog. I'm going to assign them a border, which I'm going to make blue. It is also possible for them not to have a border. I simply disable the border and that will show me the original image that I have uploaded. My original images were all executed as square images and so they would appear square. I'm going to bring back that border just for continuity's sake and I'm going to give my character the name of, let's say, Tell. Once I have created the character here, I can now go into the campaign maps that I have actually loaded up. And so we are going to go to the Gartak Collision Collider and that will open up this map, which uh, has already been played on a little bit by the player characters but which is also showing me both levels. So I'm just going to hide the top level and go down to the level that the PCs are actually on and close my stack. And now if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that the PCs are engaged in a confrontation with one of the rooms uh, in the northern section of the map, but there's an extensive map for them to explore elsewhere. Some corridors have already been explored, some have not been explored. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the new token that we created and then assign them various values. To do so, I simply click on the token tab. That will now automatically include any PC tokens called player tokens that I created for the campaign. There is our till token. All I do is simply left click on the token, left click on the map to add the till character anywhere I like to the map. Important to note is that we have to set up a few features in order to really maximize the functioning of Dungeon Fog. Firstly, I select my character and I select the Enable Sight tab. I then decide the range in squares for now and I would say three squares in either direction would be the line of sight that this character would have. So if I were to move the character into this cargo bay, for example, we would see that there's a faint outline of the area that the character can see. This, however, is the GM screen. This is not the player screen. We want the player screen to be a little bit more sophisticated than just showing the entire map to the player. But first, before we get there, we have one last thing to set up. We need to select our canvas by using the select tool and left clicking on the canvas. And this will bring up this interface. The important thing about this interface is something that we have not used before the distance metric and the real world units. I firstly select real world units and one square on my map equals five feet. I can use the drop down menu to change that to whichever option I like, inches, miles, kilometers or meters. I've set it to five feet and the distance metric then needs to be calculated using one of the different geometric methods. There is Euclidean geometry, there is one for one, which is used in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, there is one for two, which is, for example, in Pathfinder and in 3.5 edition of Dungeons and Dragons, and then there is the Manhattan calculation as well. These are how it calculates movement across the diagonals, ostensibly. We're going to stick with the Dungeons and Dragons calculation for now. Again, no real impact on our GM view. However, when I move a character token in the player view, things get very different. To open up the player view, I'm simply going to add a viewer, and this will be a player viewer. Now, you can either share this link with your online friends so that they could access it, or you could generate a local player viewer. I'm going to generate a local player window for this tutorial. This brings up a local player viewer window. Notice that all of the areas that the players have not yet visited or illuminated are dark to them. That is all that the player would see. Switching back to the GM screen, we realize that the player viewer reticule 
is in the wrong place. This gray box indicates what the players will be seeing if they have no control over that area and only the GM has control over the player viewer reticule. To change the location of the reticule, simply click on the player viewer reticule that you wish to control by left clicking. Notice the reticule becomes green because it's assigned to that particular player viewport. And then as I move around, it will move around within the player viewer, not the GM viewer. Let me switch to the player viewer now so that you can see what happens when I move that green box around in the same motion. The player viewer window is static and now the GM begins to move that player reticule and as a result the player's viewport now begins to move as well. That's okay but it's still not ideal because the GM is controlling what the player is seeing. We want the player to be able to control that view. So I'm going to switch back to the GM view now and now I'm going to select within the player tab assign token. What this will allow me to do is assign one of the tokens currently present on the map to be the controller of the player view reticule. I'm going to assign the till character. First, what that does is it automatically snaps the viewport to that particular token. If I switch back to the player viewport, you'll notice it has recentered on the till character. In the GM viewport, if I now move that character, so I use the select tool, I select the character, and I now move the character in the GM view, the GM view does not realign, it does not readjust. It stays where it is. The player viewport, however, adjusts accordingly. I'm now in the player viewer. And notice as I, as the GM, are moving this token around, the player port is automatically adjusting depending on where I am moving the token. It will follow the token wherever I go. That's a really, really powerful function to give the player agency as to what they are seeing but it's still not enough. I want the player to be able to move their token. I switch back to the GM screen view now and I select the player tab. This will bring up the player token. We know that we have already assigned the till token to the viewport. Note that the token assigned symbol correlates with the player tab window that you can select and assign. Once we have selected till as our token that controls the viewport, we can also select whether that particular token can move all tokens, move only their own token, or move no tokens. If we select own token, then when I go through to the player viewport, this is the view that the players would be seeing, the player can now left click on their token and move their token around as they so choose. Now because we added in real world units and the distance metric, when we move the character, the distance the character is moving from their start position is displayed on the screen, as well as the screen shifting to readjust to where the player character token now is on the map. This allows us to determine that the player token has moved 15 feet, arrived at a window, has moved through the window, oh, has not moved through the window. The reason why the token has not moved through the window is because the token is now locked to the room. They cannot leave the room at all until they find a door. In this particular instance, the character was never meant to get into this particular room. It's a sealed room showing a very dangerous situation. The GM will have to manually select the token in the GM view and move the token out of that room. Perhaps a teleportation spell for some kind. Now that the character is once again in a legal space, the character can now move around the map again, getting the distance that they have moved, displayed to them quite easily, and when they arrive at a door, they can then move through the door. Notice that doors block line of sight, so if a room has not been exposed or revealed to the players by the GM controller, as per the standard Fog of War usage, the room vanishes from player sight. This makes for very dramatic exploration options as each character can have its own viewport and will see only what they are seeing. They will not see what their fellow player characters are seeing. It should be noted that some rooms have been fully revealed whilst others have not. The reason for this is in the GM view I have selected to reveal the entire room or fog of war based on the room. If I select this tool and I select the corridor the fog of war will be limited once again to only the areas that the player character can see. If I switch back to the player character map, for example, they are not seeing the entire corridor anymore. They're only seeing the area that they can actually see with their line of sight. As they move down the corridor, more information is revealed to them. The same goes if I switch back to the GM screen. If I were to hide the entire area of space around the characters, they would no longer see that either. This is entirely up to you as to what you prefer. 
if the characters can see out windows, do they get to see outside or not? Aside from using the room-based Fog of War, there is also the brush-based Fog of War. This allows us to give additional sight or options for the player characters. The brush-based Fog of War works simply by allowing us to draw out a certain shape and reveal that to the player characters. For example, if the door that the player character had just arrived at actually contains a small window, we might want to decrease the size of the reveal tool and then reveal a strip of sight to the player character, which when we switch to the player viewer, will now reveal a sliver of light shining through the door and revealing the room beyond. And that is how you sign the character viewport, the character fog of war, and the character token in Dungeon Fog.